This is a solubility equilibrium mini lecture. We are in the unit right now of equilibrium along with acid base. Solubility is another type of equilibrium. So for example, KEQ just means standard equilibrium. KA, which hopefully you know and hopefully you're saying out loud to yourself, is an acid at equilibrium. Generally, we write KAs for weak acids. So KB would be a base equilibrium constant and, again, for weak bases. KSP stands for the equilibrium constant. It's called a solubility product, so for SP, constant. This is to be used for substances that we say are insoluble, but we know they dissolve just a tiny bit. So something like salt isn't going to have a KSP because it completely dissolves. Now, here's the analogy I would give you. NaCl completely dissolves in water to form Na plus and Cl minus. Just like HCl completely ionizes in water to form H plus and Cl minus. This is a strong acid, so we say its Ka is very large, and we really don't write the Ka for it because it completely dissociates. This is pretty much the same. It completely dissociates. But if you take something like silver chloride, if you look at silver chloride, you would see that it's insoluble in water. It's listed as insoluble. However, I know that a very, very, very small amount of it is an equilibrium with Ag+, plus, which is aqueous in solution, and Cl-, minus, which is aqueous in solution. And if I were to write a KSP for this using my KSP rules, I, knew, I know I do products, so Ag+, plus times Cl- minus over reactants, but this is a solid, remember. So when you're writing your KSPs, they are never going to have a denominator. It's always just the numerator, just the products, because the denominator or the reactant is always a solid. So you have a table of KSP values, and it's in this packet that's titled AP Chemistry Solubility Equilibrium. If you flip it over, there are a whole bunch of KSP. So when I look at this, the one for silver chloride, it's right here. I'm not quite sure if you can even read that well, but it's 1.6 times 10 to the negative 10. So if I were to find the KSP, what I would have to do is give the concentrations or figure out how much can I dissolve. What's the concentration of Ag plus at equilibrium? I have to call these things some variable so I can solve for it. Well, here's my assumption. For every AgCl I have, I'm going to make the same amount of Ag plus as Cl minus. I'm not going to have a difference in my Ag plus and Cl minus. So really, if I call Ag plus x, then Cl minus is also x. So that is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 10. So now I have that really equals x squared. So 1.6 times 10 to the negative 10 is x squared. So if I take the square root of that, I get 1.26 times 10 to the negative 5 is x. Well, what the heck does x mean? If I look at this, what that tells me is if I put some AgCl in water at equilibrium, the concentration of Ag plus is going to be 1.26 times 10 to the negative 5 molar. How do I know that? Because I said Ag plus was x. The concentration of Cl minus is going to be 1.26 times 10 to the negative 5 molar. So when I put a beaker of AgCl in water out on the counter, in it, I'm going to have a whole bunch of solid AgCl that's not dissolving. But I am going to have in the solution, these concentrations as well. 
So not only do I have the solid AgCl at the bottom, but just a tiny bit has dissolved into the Ag plus and Cl minus. So the trickiest part, however, is not one that's quite as easy as this one. So we're going to take a look at the first problem in your packet, which looks like this. So it gives you an equation, let two chloride dissolves to a slight extent in water according to the equation below. Now here's the important thing, let two chloride is PbCl2, so in water it doesn't make Cl2 minus, it makes two Cl minus, and don't forget about that. It gives you the concentration, I'm sorry, it gives you the concentration of the lead ion. So we know that would be X. So what's the Cl? Well, say I have one PB Cl2. I make one PB and two Cls. So for every X PB, I'm going to have two X Cls. So what I know is my KSP equals the X for the PB and the two X squared. Why the heck is it squared? Well, let's look at this. KSP for this equation, if I just were to write it, PB2 plus times CL minus squared. Well, I know PB2 plus is X, and I know CL minus is 2X. So when you have a 2X, you're squaring it, always. You're never squaring an X and not having the 2X in front of it. So when you do that and they actually do the math out for you, you get that the KSP is 1.7 times 10 to the negative fifth. So really in these problems, I'm measuring different things. Here's another example. Copper 1 bromide, the UBR, has a measured solubility of 2.0 times 10 to the negative fourth molar at 25 degrees Celsius. It wants me to calculate KSP. So the first thing I'm going to do is put in equilibrium, Cu plus aqueous plus Br minus aqueous. My KSP is going to be Cu plus Br minus. Oh good, this is an easy one. They're both x, right? So for every Cu plus I have, I have a Br minus. And I know that it gives me the concentration. It has a measured solubility of 2.0 times 10 to the negative fourth. So that means x is 2.0 times negative fourth. And I have to square that. And when I do that, I get 4.0 times 10 to the negative 8. And the great news about this packet is I can check my answer and I am good to go. My suggestion would be to continue and try some of these problems. The hardest part you will get to is whether or not something precipitates. But it's just like equilibrium. If you've made too much, if your Q is greater than your KSP, then you are going to have a super saturated solution and you will have a precipitate. And that is outlined on a page in your packet. It's on one of the last pages where it says KSP in the reaction quotient.